Welcome to another message from God's Word. We're studying all the parables in the Bible. My Herbert Locke here. This is what they taught in the seminary when I went to the seminary, but we never got past about page 100 or 200 in the book. And we're trying to get it all down and recording classes so you out there as if you want to study God's Word in depthly, that you can do it. We're going to study First and Second Peter in this message. Peter, apostle of Jesus Christ to those who reside as aliens scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, who were chosen elect. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood, and may grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead ones, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in that last time. In this you greatly rejoice even though now for a little while it is necessary that you have been distressed by various trials, tribulations. That the proof of your faith being more precious than gold which is perishable even though te so tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor to the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you have not, do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. As to, the, as to this salvation, the prophets who prophesied the grace that would come to you made careful search and inquiry. Seeking to know what person or time the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating. Now, let me say this. All the way from Adam to the cross of Calvary, every person that has ever been born again or saved, believed in God, Abraham, etc., Adam, had the Spirit of God dwelling in them, in them. It became a part of them. Lot had the Spirit of God dwelling in him. Christ within them as indicating as he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but in these things which now have been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit, sent from heaven things into which angels longed to look and investigate. Therefore gird up your minds for action. Keep sober in your spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all of your lifestyle and behavior <coughs> because it is written you shall be holy for I am holy <coughs> and if you address as father the one who impartially judges according to each man's work conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay upon this earth knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, your futile way of life, but with the precious blood as of the lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Jesus Christ. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but he appeared in these times for the sake of you who through him are believers in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and your hope are in God since you have an obedience 
to the truth, purified your souls with sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is as grass, and all is glory like the flower of the grass, and the grass withers, and the flower fades away. But the word of God abides forever, and this is the word which we have preached to you. Therefore, putting aside all malice, all wickedness, and all guile, and all hypocrisy, and all envy, and all slander, and all of these are plural. All malices, all guiles, and all hypocrisies, and all envies, and all slander. Like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word, that you by it may grow in respect to salvation. If you have tasted the kindness of the Lord, and coming to him as a living soul, rejected by men, and choice and precious in the sight of God, you also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for the holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For this is contained in Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief choice stone, a precious cornerstone. And he who believes on him shall not be disappointed. This precious value then is for you who believe, but for those who disbelieve. The stone which the builders rejected, this became the very cornerstone, the foundation of the whole building. Peter is not that stone, as you can see. Peter says he's not the stone, it's Jesus Christ that is the stone, the foundation rock. Thou art a little stone, a pebble, but upon this gigantic foundation rock I'll be building my church and the gates of hell shall not wrestle her down even though it would try and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense for, the st for they stumble because they are disobedient to the word and to this doom they were also appointed but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation a people for God's own position that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light for you once were not a people you were a no people is what it literally says but you are the people of God you are not received mercy but now you have received mercy beloved I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from freshly lust which wage war against the soul keep your behavior excellent among the gentile so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers they may on account of or because of your good deeds as they observe them glorify God in the day of visitation submit yourselves to the Lord's sake to every human institution whether to king or as one in authority our governors are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right. And such is the will of God that by doing right you may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Act as free men and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as bond slaves of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God and honor the king, the emperor. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are unreasonable, perverse. That's hard to do. For this finds favor, if for the sake of conscience toward God, a man bears up under sorrows when suffering unjustly. For what credit is there if, when you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it with patience? But when you do what is right and suffer for, if you patiently endure it, this finds favor with God, grace with God. For you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps. Who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. And being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept 
entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might die to sin and live to righteousness for by his wounds we are healed spiritually. Healing is not in the atonement. Physical healing. Spiritual healing. For you were contentedly straying like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. In the same way, you wives, be submissive to your own husbands, so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives. As they observe your chaste and respectful behavior and let your adornment be not be external only, braiding of the hair and wearing of gold jewelry and putting on dresses. But let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of the gentle and quiet spirit, which is a precious sight in the sight of God. For in this way, in former times, the holy women also, who hoped in God, also adorned themselves, being submission to their own husbands. Thus Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you have become her children if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. Your husband likewise lived with your wives in an understanding way as with a weaker vessel since she is a woman. Now woman, I want to say this right now. The, the writer of the book goes on to say a woman is weaker than a man. A woman did almost all the work in all the history of the world. They did the hardest labor. They did the hardest work. Everywhere except in America and maybe England. This is women worked hard. Men were the warriors. They fought and protected their wives. Grant her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. To sum it up, let all the harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit not returning evil for evil, insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead for you were called to the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. Verse number 10. Let him who means to love life and see good days refrain from his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears attend to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do, do evil. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And who is there to harm you if you prove zealous for what is good? But even if you suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear their intimidation and do not be troubled. But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. And keep a good conscience so that in the thing in which you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better if God should will it so that you should suffer for doing what is right rather than doing what is wrong. For Christ also died for the sins once and for all, the just for the unjust, in order that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh and made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made propagation to the spirits in prison, who once were disobedient when the patience of God kept waiting the days of Noah during the construction of the ark in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Some of them were saved on the outside of that ark, remember. But they had to die. And corresponding to the baptism now saves you, nor the removal of the dirt from flesh, but appeal to God for good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Baptism teaches the gospel, the resurrection, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it should teach us also that we die to the old flesh that we had and were raised anew unto God to live a new and different life. Who is at the right hand of God, having gone into heaven after angels and authorities and powers have been subjected to him? 
Therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same purpose, because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. <clears throat> so as to live the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For the time already passed is sufficient for you to have carried out the desire of the Gentiles, having pursued a course of sensuality, lust, drunkenness, carousing, drinking parties, and abominable idolaters. And on all this, they are surprised that you do not run with them into the same excesses of dissipation, and they may malign you. But they shall give an account to him who is already judged of the living and the dead. For the gospel has for this purpose been preached even to those who are dead, those in Hades, that though they are judged in the flesh as men, they might live in the spirit according to the will of God. The end of all things is at hand, and therefore be of sound judgment and sober in spirit for the purpose of prayer. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaint. As each one has received a special gift, employ it, serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks, let him speak. As it were, the utterances of God, and whosoever serves, let him serve by the strength of which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the, the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not be surprised by the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the sufferings of Jesus Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also in the revelation of his glory you might rejoice with exaltation. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. By no means let any one of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or a troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as Christians, let him not feel ashamed, but in the name let him glorify God. For it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God, and if it begins with us first, what shall be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it was with difficulty that you that righteousness is saved, if it seemed difficult that the righteous is saved, what will become of the godless man in the sinner? The godless man in the sinner. Therefore let those who suffer according to the will of God entrust their souls to faithful creator and in doing what is right. Therefore I exhort the elders among you as your fellow elder and witnesses suffering the Christ and the partaker of all the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God among you as, as Jesus had told him. Not under compulsion but voluntary according to the will of God. Not for sordid gain but with eagerness. Nor yet is lording over those allotted to you of charge and proving to be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you shall receive an unfading crown of glory. You younger men likewise be subject to the elders, and all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. For God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he may exalt you in proper time, casting all your anxiety upon him, because he cares for you. Be sober spirit, be on alert. Your adversary, the devil, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And you may be that next one. But resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. And after you've suffered for a little while, the God of grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect, conform, strengthen, and establish you To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. Though Sylvanus our faithful brother, for so I regard him, 
I have written to you briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the grace of God. Stand firm in it. She who is in Babylon, the church, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to you, all who are in Christ. Second Peter. We're talking about all the parabolic teachings of Peter, and here we're reading it. Simon Peter, a bond servant of the apostle Jesus Christ, to those who received a faith of the same kind as ours. By the righteousness of God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Seeing that his divine power has granted to every one of us everything pertaining to life and good godliness, through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and ex excellence, for by these he granted to us his precious and magnificent promises. In order that, by them you might become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Now, for this very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence and your moral excellence knowledge. And in your knowledge, self-control, in your self-control, preservation, our perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, Christian love. For in these qualities are yours, and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these qualities is blind and short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about the calling and the choosing you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, will be abundantly, abundantly supplied to you. Therefore, I shall always be ready to remind you of these things, even though you are already know them, have been established in the truths which is present with you. And I consider it right as long as I am in this earthly dwelling tabernacle to stir you up by way of reminder knowing that the laying aside of the earthly dwelling is imminent about to happen at any time Peter's about to get killed mm. as also our Lord Jesus Christ made it clear to me what about him Peter said don't worry about him And I will also be diligent that at any time after my departure you may be able to call these things to mind. We still have these words today, don't we? We do not follow cleverly devised tales when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, such an utterance as it this was made to him by the magic glory, this is my beloved son with whom I am pleased. Hear him. And we ourselves heard this utterance made from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word made more sure to which you do well to pay attention as to the lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. But know this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made known by an act of human will, but men moved by the Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit spoke from God. In other words, the Bible is inspired by God, completely inspired by God. But false prophets also arise among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you who will secretly in introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. And many will follow their own sensuality. Because of them, the way of truth will be maligned. And in the greed, they will exploit you with false words, and their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell, Hades, committed them into the pits of darkness reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, 
a preacher of righteousness with seven others when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. And if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction by reducing them to ashes, having made them an example to those who would live ungodly thereafter. And if he rescued a righteous lot oppressed by the sensual conduct of the unprincipled men, for by what he saw and heard, that righteous man, while living among them, felt his righteous soul tormented day after day with their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from temptation and to keep the unrighteous under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who indulge in the flesh in its corrupt desires and despise authority, daring self-will, they do not tremble when they revile angelic magistrates. Whereas angels who are greater in might and power do not bring upon a reviving judgment against them before the Lord. But these, like unreasoning animals, born as creatures of instinct to be captured and killed, reviling while they have no knowledge, will in the destruction of those creatures also be destroyed. Suffering wrong is the wages of doing wrong. They count it pleasure to revel in the daytime, and they are stains and blemishes revealing their deceptions as they carouse with you. Having eyes full of adultery, they never cease from sin. Enticing unstable souls, having a heart trained in greed and accursed children. Forsaking the right way, they have gone astray, having followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he receives a rebuke from his own transgressions for a dumb donkey. Speaking with the voice of a man restrained the madness of the prophet. These are springs without water and mist driven by the storm for whom the black darkness has been reserved. All kinds of parabolic teaching here. Metaphys, meta, metaphors, parables, similes, proverbs. For speaking out arrogantly a words of vanity, they enticed by fleshly desire, be sensuality, those who barely escape the ones who are live in error. <clears throat> Promising them freedom while they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by what a man is overcome, by this he is enslaved. By what a man is overcome, by this he is enslaved. For after they escape the defilements of the world by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and are overcome. The last state has begun worse for them than the first. For it would be better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn away the holy commandment delivered to them. It has happened to them according to the true proverb, the dog returns to his own vomit and the sow, after washing, returns to wallowing in the mire. This is now, beloved, the second letter I'm writing to you in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandments of the Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. Know this first of all, that in the last days mockers will come with their mocking, falling after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of the creation. For when they maintain this and escape their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world as then was destroyed, being flooded with water. But the present heavens and earth by his word are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. But do not let those, this <coughs> fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. <coughs> the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count, count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for anyone to perish, for all to come to the repentance. God is not wishing that anyone should perish, but all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burned up. 
since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in the holy conduct and godliness? Looking for the hastening and coming of the Lord of the God, on account of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. <coughs> and regard the patience of the Lord to be salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, wrote to you. As also in all his letters, speaking in them these things in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. They rest the scriptures to their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard, lest being carried away by the error of unprincipled men, you fall into your own fall from your own steadfastness but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to him be glory both now and to the day of eternity Amen what a beautiful beautiful pair of letters yeah. <clears throat> now on page 353 in all the parables of the Bible the parabolic writing of Paul of Peter the parabolic writing of the epistles of Peter. The epistles of Peter are characterized by the use of vigorous, gripping metaphors, illustrations, some which are indeed terrible when Peter comes to describe false teachers and scoffers. It is most profitable exercise to search these gem, germs of all the doctrines of the Lord's teaching from which the apostles subsequently repeated and exhorted and expanded. Peter remembering the words of Jesus Christ regarding his readiness for his return, Luke 12 and 35, exhorts the saints to gird up their loins of their mind. To gird up the loins of your mind. Let down for repose, regather together for energetic action and immediate journey. In his exhortation to holiness of life, Peter reminds us that we have been redeemed at an infinite cost the blood of the Savior and our God. To redeem a person meant to ransom him, deliver him out of slavery or captivity by paying a ransom. Christ as a lamb gave his life as a ransom and by his death and resurrection delivers us from our, all of our foes. What a beautiful and articulate symbol of true redemption Peter provides us. A blood-bought emancipation from the bondage of the vain and vicious habits of sins is ours through the blood of the Redeemer. The corruptible seed refers to Abraham. But salvation could not have come by, from Abraham's descent. Man can only be saved through the revelation of a spiritual regeneration as the Bible unfolds. The word of God is Christ himself, and he alone can save. All flesh is as grass. He borrows a parabolic illustration of Isaiah used to describe the temporary nature of life. Man is here today and gone tomorrow. First, there is a simple and comprehensive intimation. All flesh is as grass. And then we have more special analogy rising out of it. The glory of man is the flower of grass, and man himself is like grass. His glory like its flower. Life is short and the period of its perfect development is still shorter. No matter how fragrant and attractive the flower of humanity, it is short and withers and dies. No matter how beautiful a woman is, no matter how handsome a man is, it doesn't last long. Mm -hmm. Discussing those elements of this <coughs> disunion, Tending to separate those who were recently incorporated into a low life in Christ, Peter goes into the nursery for two illustrations of spiritual immaturity. Newborn babes, the pure milk of the word. Paul likewise used the metaphor of milk in 1 Corinthians 3 and 2. Infants, while such thrive on milk, 
The sincere milk of the word refers to those simplicities of the gospel so easy for young Christians to understand. As with children, so with believers, as they grow and develop, more nourishing body building food is required. A blood treasure. After dealing with those who blandly rejected Christ, Peter turns to the privileges and position of those who embraced him as their Messiah Savior. The divine estimation of their new lives must now be lived out. All the glorious titles of the old Israel belong to the fuller sense to those who are now the true Israel of God. A chosen generation. The, rec the redeemed were chosen in and by God before the foundation of the world in the spring of our choice. And redemption were in the Father's purpose. Dying they were, but the new race and generation is not one common physical descent. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. This word peculiar does not carry with it its present connotation of being odd or out of ordinary. It means a people for his own possession, for his own special reservation, a peculiar, which means over and above, it means outstanding. actually means over and above and was common to the secular life of the Romans. Law and custom permitted a slave to acquire a private property through his own skill and industry. He could buy himself out of slavery. <coughs> if he accumulated a considerable sum, he could purchase his liberty and thereby raise himself to a higher position. The savings of such a slave were called his peculium the peculiar people, his peculium, his very own property. With a law protecting his own right to his own self and his own possessions. The figure of speech as used by Peter indicates the kind of ownership God is pleased to claim to those one back to himself after they had been slaves of sin. All saved by his grace are his own cherished treasure. Further parabolic gems received from the master which Peter develops are those Christ as the foundation stone. Peter, as we can see, had a fondness for explaining his figures of speech which proves how closely he walked with Christ in Christ's footsteps. The stone, we have come not to a dead one, but a living stone. Even him who spoke of himself as the stone all who are his become living stones, polished after the similitude of the palace. Together, the living stones form a spiritual house, an edifice. Time cannot decay or destroy. Strangers and pilgrims in this world. Strangers and pilgrims. Peter describes the fighters waging war through life against multiform sin as strangers and pilgrims. What is the difference between a stranger and a pilgrim? A stranger is a person away from home. His pilgrim is one who is on his way home. A stranger and a pilgrim. A stranger is a person away from home. A pilgrim is one on his way to home. Are we not both away from our heavenly home and yet on our way to such a blissful home? When Peter penned this simile, he had in mind the military monarchs whose policy it was to employ soldiers away from home who had not a home to care for, who were thus more completely at the disposal of their commanders. As soldiers of Jesus Christ, we should not be at home in this world. Because of our citizenship is in heaven and we ought not to mind earthly things, the more loosely connected our hearts are to the things upon the earth and the more firm will be their anchor of our souls on high. Urging us to follow the steps of the master. Peter uses a curious word for example. Found nowhere else in the New Testament. It means to copy a book which the child must write from a plan suggested for carrying out in detail. A sketch to be filled in. We are to copy the way of Jesus endured suffering and thereby follow his steps. 
The day was when Peter was called to follow those steps, and he did so literally. And our shepherd and bishop, we are to follow him with his acquaintance with the parable of the good shepherd in John 10. It was natural for Peter to use the simile of the shepherd. Jesus told him, feed my sheep, shepherd my sheep. When he comes to deal with the subject of wives to husband, Peter ventures upon the theme of the most fitting adornment for wives. In those days, when colossal sums are spent on their hairstyles and jewelry and fashions and clothes, it is necessary to turn to the Bible for advice about these trifles. Here we have a portion dealing with female adorning and others condemning one style and adorning and commending the other. The God who fashioned our bodies tells us what a style of apparel makes his children beautiful. It is not physical beauty but spiritual holiness. Not costly jewels, but the possession of a more precious promises. Not the costliness and most fashionable clothes, but the ornament of meek and quiet spirit. The hidden man of the heart is the most suitable adornment. The best of apparel and ornaments are perishable, but the spiritual adornment is imperishable. Ornaments of grace. A vessel. The term vessel is used of the body. Men are built for war. Women are built to work. His final commission before he left Peter, Christ enjoined him to feed my sheep. Taking up the same simile, Peter urges the elders to feed the flock of God without any thought of personal gain or superiority. The good shepherd died for the sheep, returns the chief shepherd, and he will reward them with an unfading crown. As shepherds have to be vigilant, preserving the flocks while drowsing from a prowling lion, so must be alert, seeing that the devil is a roaring lion is also prowling about seeking to devour the little flock. Satan is eyeing all the Christians in turn to see which he has the best chance of not merely stalking forth vaguely to look for prey. When Peter came to speak of his immediate death, he referred to it as the putting off of this tabernacle. Peter would die a violent death. The clear vision of the purified believer whose eye is single and whose body is full of light. The return of Christ in glory illumine the darkness of this world and show the way through it obscurities. The day star occurs nowhere else in the New Testament. The term day star. Christ speaks of himself as the brightest morning star. Revelation 22, 16. Describing God's judgment upon false teachers and those who are corrupt and presumptuous. Peter employs some striking grammatic descriptions. He calls them natural butte beasts, fit only for destruction because of their corrupt influence. Because of the luxurious living, they are as spots and blemishes. In contrast to godly souls without spot and blemish, of those adulterous, covetous, self-indulgent sinners, Peter says they are cursed children and wells without water and dried up and not able to refresh the thirsty and clouds carried away by a tempest. Empty clouds, mist promising for refreshment but so flimsy as to be blown away by the wind. In this, thus false teachers deceive those thirsting for the true knowledge. The parabolic description of these, the wicked men, will be realized. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow, after she'd been washed, walked into the mire again. What abandonment to abomination is here figuratively depicted, discursing on the long suffering of God, who is not slack concerning redemption of any of his promises. One day, is with the Lord a thousand years, and one thousand years is one day. This means, according to divine reckoning, it is not quite two days since Christ died. Then dealing with the day of the Lord, not the day of Christ, which is related to his return for his own, but the day of the Lord, which is associated with the judgment, Peter 
employing language that had been heard by the master used adopts the figure of the thief coming at night. Coming to the epistle to John, it is not surprising to discover how most devoid they are of symbolic illustration. His gospel, as we have seen, uses the word proverb for parables. And while rich in his allegoric meaning, does not mention our Lord's parables. It is evident that the words of the master made a deep impression on John's mind. And after years, he meditated upon them and reproduced them rather than his own thoughts and words. Thus in his epistles, he writes with the most commanding authority and most loving tenderness in simple, clear, and calm language, unadorned by imagery, contrast, or mark, light and darkness, life and death, truth and lying, holiness and sin, loving and hating, love of the Father and the love of the world, children of God and the children of the devil, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error, light and darkness, contrast. John uses and our reminiscence of the apostles' previous language. Our Heavenly Father, we send this message out this day. We apply it to our own hearts first. Father, help us walk in your ways. Help us to glorify you in great ways. Help these words to go out to build your people up in this holy faith. I pray for those in Australia, I pray for those in New York, China, the Philippines, Japan, even in the Middle East, and all over where they hear these words, I pray, Father, that you will use them to glorify yourself. Let them see Jesus and not me. Father, forgive us where we fail you. Guide us, goad us, provoke us to do good. Protect us from those things that are evil. And Father, I pray if there's one out there that doesn't know you, that these words will encourage them to believe in you, to ask you forgiveness of sins, repent of their sins and call upon you to save their souls, and then to call upon you to help them serve you in whichever way you wish. For we all have a purpose in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.